Ceramics have been repaired for thousands of years for reuse, sentimental value, aesthetic care, monetary reasons and religious significance. Examples of these repairs can be found in the University of Melbourne's Classics and Archaeology collection. These repairs take different forms depending on when and why they were carried out. Ancient repairs are those used during the functional life of the object to enable its continued use, though this use may change after breaking and subsequent repair. Bitumen was used as an adhesive to repair vessels 8,000 years ago. All over the ancient world, holes were drilled on each side of a broken edge, which were then held together with plant fibre, sinew or metal wire. During the European Renaissance, Greek and Roman antiquities were valued for their evidence of wealth and prestige and displayed in cabinets of curiosity. The restoration of Greek and Roman antiquities was often commissioned by nobles and princes and undertaken by artists. Accomplished artists such as Michelangelo, Barocchio, Donatello, Lorenzetto and Cellini all restored antiquities. Commissions prescribed that restoration should not be distinguishable from the original artefact being described as repristination or returning an artefact to its pristine, as new state, placing the beauty of the artefact above all things. During this time, there was a demand for what appeared to be complete, fully restored vessels, and major restoration workshops were established to meet these needs. Repristination remained a dominant restoration practice into the 1930s and 1940s, when new restoration theories were developed. Repristination restorations were highly interventive. Sherds were often had their edges ground down to make the fragments fit together more easily during reconstruction. Sometimes sherds from different vessels were introduced to make the vase appear complete. Some scenes were painted over to hide details that were perceived to be immoral and restorations were often signed and dated by the restorer. These vessels now are significant as artefacts that tell the story of repair. The repairs demonstrate how the vessels were valued for their figurative and narrative scenes before their scientific value was realised and are important historical remains that tell us how Greek and Roman pottery were appreciated and how museums presented objects to the public. Archaeological repairs are repairs carried out by archaeologists in the field at archaeological digs. Vessels are adhered together to establish the minimum number of vessels found on the site or within the excavation square and to determine the shape, typology, decoration and stylistic attribution of the object before it broke. Reconstructing the vessel is called refitting or reassembling by archaeologists and allows refitted vessels to be photographed and drawn on site for future publications before returning home. Early archaeological restoration carried out in the 1800s used what was at hand. Everything from fossils, wire, string, matchsticks, nails, pieces of wire, bicycle and umbrella spokes, scraps of wood, pieces of newsprint have been found. Even cement was poured into fractured vessels so that it crept into hairline cracks and holes. This process has been used to assist with the reconstruction of this amphora from Vunos, Cyprus, which also appears to have fly screen mesh on the interior of the vessel used to reinforce the cement. Some of the archaeological repairs found in the Classics and Archaeology collection are untidy and misaligned, demonstrating that they were repaired for immediate use and not for future displays. Fine locations were written directly onto sherds before conjoining sherds were located, and there are drips of adhesive and sticky tape residues. Some have fills that are half finished, probably demonstrating that the archaeologist or student undertaking the repair ran out of time before the field season ended. Analysis of the adhesive by the Grimwage shows that the repair materials were easily obtainable commercial, non-conservation grade adhesives, like Yuhu and Tarzan Grip, which can be bought in bulk at a hardware store prior to departing for field work or bought in the isolated locations that excavations can often be found. I've actually found it in a small village in the north of Syria. These adhesives include cellulose nitrate. Cellulose nitrate adhesive is unstable. As it ages, it discolours, shrinks and damages the ceramic fabric over time. Where appropriate, the quick field-based repairs carried out by archaeologists have been reversed and repaired again by the Grimwade using conservation processes which attempt to retain all of the micro-stories embedded in the ceramic fabric, such as what food was stored or cooked within. These conservation repairs respect the multiple layers of value an archaeological object can have, including future values which may not yet be apparent. Conservation of archaeological ceramics comprises a detailed analytical study of the artefact, 
investigating an application of new chemicals to preserve ceramics. Ceramic repairs can be carried out in a lab or the archaeology field lab. Stable and where possible reverse materials and techniques are used that acknowledge original uses, burial and archaeological research needs. The Classics and Archaeology Collection at the University of Melbourne provides a valuable resource for the teaching of not just the history of the objects and societies that made and used them, but the history of their value by the societies that repaired and restored them. The Research and Display Agency of the objects is used by stakeholders to communicate the archaeological story and materiality of the objects to transfer and communicate knowledge. The Classical and Archaeological Collection forms an important part of object-based learning for secondary, undergraduate and postgraduate students.